right, everyone, and welcome back. We have made it into our fourth match of today, the day of the wild card action Ten here. We've got to find out remaining. between these six teams what two are going to be moving on to the main DAC grounds and what four, well, their journey will be ending here. we got Speed Gaming going to be taking on Energy Pacemaker Gaming. We've been seeing a lot of Energy Pacemaker today. They are currently 1-2, and two. Speed Gaming 2-1. and one. Both these teams need a win Dying to kind of help either put themselves into a tiebreaker situation or at least Radiant secure themselves in the top two. Bring you the English coverage as us over at Beyond the Summit as well as Dota Cinema and for Beyond the Summit 2, coming from my own little New York City apartment, I'm not going to be doing it alone. I got my great and fabulous co-caster back, Cameron. Base skip. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. Great, great, great. I hope you're amped up why, and ready for more myself? Dota. What's going on here? Oh, can you hear me, buddy? Ten seconds. Ten yeah, seconds. I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. All right, we're all but good. But I can also hear myself. Oh, that's me. Five seconds. Five. You're now. That's gone now. Now you will not hear yourself. I'm sorry. That was just uh Oh no, I did wrong one. Time. Sorry. This one there. Okay. Now I got uh -huh. it. Sorry about that, buddy. Okay, we got it. We yeah, got that it. was me. That was all me. I have like a I have a pretty crazy <laughs> mixer here, and I gotta like switch oh, it yeah. on these different settings, and I, I have yeah. to hit a lot of buttons and turn a lot of knobs, and I'm trying to do it all by myself. It's not like I have K pop tosis here helping me out. I'm just like going crazy. Anyways, enough about that, yeah. enough about me. Let's talk about the draft because these kids are drafting mm -hmm. pretty damn fast. We're going to get to see the first Wisp here on Beyond the Summit 2, and he's got his great and trusty Tony friend with him. And on the other side, he got the first pick Axe, Jug, Witch Doctor. That is more meta than I care to imagine. Yeah, Speed Gaming just going straight in. They've got their early push, they've got their Axe initiation, and. They're kind of sorted. Energy Pacemaker. We saw them win that game earlier with the the Tiny Wisp. That was their match against Power Rangers. So uh, bringing that one back. It's I don't know how well positioned it is here, especially against the, the Axe. Not too bad against the Jug. If you can just combo him right out of the gate, then you've got absolutely no problems. But um, yeah, otherwise this could could be tough. Uh, what else is note noteworthy draft wise? So we've got Whoa. Viper band out, Lion band. Man, man, man! Yeah. They pick up the troll, so attack speed is gonna yeah. get pretty ridiculous here for your tiny overpower troll mm -hmm. ult. Holy crap! Your buildings are gonna crumble pretty damn fast if this guy's got a a weeping willow to swing around with that Agnum scepter. But Ten also interesting remaining. is the quick retort of the OD pickup. From Speed Five Gaming, a hero we don't see a lot of anymore. It used to be all the rage back at like TI3 is this, it was mm -hmm. the lane dominator when it was like Outworld Reserve taking time. on Razor and maybe a Viper and they just kept trading, but we don't see much anymore unless he's like a niche pick maybe, but they grab him up as a fourth pick here. I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to look and see what helps out. I mean, I guess he could Astral the Wisp and things get a bit awkward, awkward there. I just, they picked him up so quick. I, I'm not too sure where, where he fits in right now. That is, I don't know. That was worth it. Yeah, it does. It strikes me as a little bit odd. They probably could have left it a little bit later in the draft if they, uh, if they really, really wanted it. Even so, if the tiny wisp are going to be dual landing on mid, I don't think Faith that. Spirit. You know, I don't think that changes Dire things too much for the OD. It should still be. You know, it shouldn't change things too much for the the tiny wisp. They should still get their, their farm going on there and just. Kind of more meta picks coming out as we, we also add the Ventral Spirit to the mix. Got to get but, a Ventral yeah. in there somehow, whether it's banning or picking. It just you can't have yeah. a can't have a draft without that. She's something some way. She's got to be involved. I mean, you know, we we talk about it enough. We already know why this hero is the total package. It can offer a lot. They're taking that mm -hmm. bit away also from Speed Gaming and being able Ten to get the easy Roche. Remaining. And I like Speed Gaming's Witch Doctor grab. This is support they love to fall back on. Uh, next to Ventral Spirit, remaining. they're seven and four with it. Plus his cast, the tether. Just kind of works nicely to be able to counter Reserve anything time. that the Wisp wants to get involved with. Ten and, uh, seconds yeah. remaining. We'll have to see. Is now Earthshaker going to be banned out? Dire Speed Gaming team. looking for the secondary support. They don't waste too much time. They get a hold of Radiant Dazzle as their more pick. defensive support. Now allowing Axe to really kind of go off the rails and be more manly, I suppose. Plus the minus armor certainly helps out. A formidable grab here. And then on the other side of Energy Pacemakers, they got to look to round things out with, well, what I imagine being they're also... No, no, they need an off later. Uh, that's my wager. Yeah, I think the one thing about the OD pick is that Speed Gaming, maybe once they saw the Tiny Wisp and the Troll, just thought, remaining. okay, look, we can we can definitely try and put together some kind of Five aggressive try lane here, put down a lot of pressure, then all we need is somebody that's going to be able to you know, hold down their, 
hold down their 1v1 or whatever the lane matchup ends Five up being pretty capably. So I think OD definitely fits uh, definitely fits that bill. And yeah, now that we see the Dazzle coming out as well, it looks like we probably... I'd like to see Axe running at people in the early game here, honestly. Oh, yeah. He's got Witch Doctor and Dazzle for backup. I don't see any reason to just put him in the jungle and, and farm up there. Why not just, like, creep cut? I mean, you got two sets of heal yeah. with Dazzle and Witch Doctor. Let's go full-blown pub on this and just kind of hit him from behind. That would be pretty <laughs> interesting, but we'll see. But they got a bristle back now, so he's got great wave clearing there. He's a, he's a tanky boy. He can take a lot of punishment and keep on keep on fighting. Doesn't really mind maybe an axe too much, but uh, it also works nicely with uh, Wisp. So Wisp has got formidable partners across the board here. Whoops, that's a bumper. We'll go ahead and switch into the game, though, and we'll get <laughs> things underway. <laughs> I know, I'm getting a bit, a bit janky here with some of my button turning. Prepare for it's battle. weird that you mentioned Bristleback not minding Axe too much because I'd say Axe is actually one of the big Bristleback counters. You call him and he's got no control over his positioning and you're getting no value out of the that is true. Uh, the Bristleback tankiness. For, so, force him to face forward so you can hit him right in yep. the mouth instead of that Bristleback. I suppose that does work out. We'll, we'll see. That can also... old punch in the chin. Exactly. But there's a lot of people you want to punch in the chin here. And you might quickly be assaulted by a lot of aggression. Uh, speaking of which though, we mm -hmm. might just lead off with some aggression here. Leading out the charges, the Juggernaut. We'll see if they kind of end up catching anyone out. Oh, there's the wave. Let's get the hell back. Nope, half go back, half stay forward. They let Axe kind of lead out the charge here. And there's going to be the stun. Catches on two. There goes the heal. Coming out from Dazzle. The spin's going to be out. Plus, the battle hunger that's been picked up instead of the helix helps him secure the first blood on the bristle. Axe is going to be the return exchange. And we're out to a sudden brawl between EP and Speed Gaming. They quickly split on out, but EP wanted to try to secure one more. Before they go, Tomahawks are flying, they get the slow. Fan's gonna get healed up, he's so close to the stun. About five mana away, doesn't need it, they get the kill there. And now the sound of the game, Horn, as we will finally get underway. We get three kills immediately at the start, and it will tip the way towards EP coming out with two. Yeah, definitely not a bad start for them. Double kill on the Wisp is actually an immediate bottle mm -hmm. making its way out along with some sentries and a gauntlet of strength. So I think of all of the heroes for them to get their skills on, Wisp may have actually been one of the uh, one of the best. And as much as we were talking about the Bristleback, you know, potentially having problems against Axe, he does do a lot of physical damage. And you know, if if Jug gets caught out by a disable or something like that, he, he can very quickly just get beat to death. So. That's the, the one nice thing they've got going for them with the, the bristle pick here. Yeah, we'll try to match up here against this Tony Wiss combo, which could quickly jump on you before you know it. So I guess we can quickly try to fly through introductions now that things have slowly calmed down, at least for now, and the lane situation has developed. Speed Gaming here, uh, the first time we'll get the opportunity to cast them here on BTS2. Uh, I got Zevin Magic here, You're gonna be playing your Axe. We got Melody Lovers. He's going to be playing your Dazzle. I don't know their aliases. It's been a while since I've seen Speed Gaming. We got Kiao. I hope I say that right. He's playing your OD here in the mid lane, already kind of going toe to toe with Luffy's Troll. Up along the top, we got uh, YFTX. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that as one word. He's going to be playing your Witch Doctor. And just above that, we got Mr. Chow Yui. Oh, God, this is terrible, Cameron. As a <laughs> juggernaut in your top lane. Yeah. And meanwhile on EP, we have two, so your Axe player from the last game on the Bristleback. We've got Luffy, who was the Ember, now on the Troll Warlord. We've got LT on the Vengeful Spirit, Fan on Tiny, and finally we've got LE uh, on the Wisp. And looks like Wisp actually going to be making his way topside right now, as we also have a pause. Need a moment here, apparently, from mm -hmm. Melody Lovers, but yep, that audible call uh, as Wisp will add a bit of effort here to the top lane. And already the magic stick picked up there from Jug. And he's going to be happy just kind of soaking that extra bit of quill damage. You see uh, the Witch Doctor nearby looking to work with the side pull here. As they wait out a bit, we're going to go back to dual lanes, I suppose, here. It's, it's been a prominent start here for EP, so maybe they don't need too much assistance here on the bottom. It looks like Tiny's kind of able to work with the last hits for now with all the assistance of the Ventral Spirit. <laughs> Nothing too interesting going on so far. Troll actually doing pretty Dude, decently on mid, uh, all things considered. Obviously doesn't suffer on damage from being non-stop in prison, but I think you still expect the OD to uh, to pull ahead a little bit, so props to Luffy for that. Uh, and looks like we're just going to be, like you said, settling into dual lanes, so nothing too interesting so far. Wish does get that bounty rune, and he'll 
take oh, that full bottle to the top, which does save him last second, and now this nice is where they look to turn around, and they get the kill with Juggernaut. Oh, deceptive is that Bristleback. They thought they were going to get an easy pick on him, but out of the blue comes Wisp, shoots right in, and that's where mistakes are made. Speed Gaming quickly lose two in that top lane, and things just got a whole lot better for this Bristle. Yeah, that double overcharge build from the Wisp, I'd say a little bit unconventional. Most people tend to go for the Spirits, but mm -hmm. definitely pays off there, keeps the Bristle alive, and they get a massive turnaround. So 4-1 lead already for EP. We did see them get off to a you know, pretty good start in the previous game as well, so we just got to see if they can transition it a little bit better this time around. And it's three minutes in, I shouldn't be saying you know, anything too conclusive about, uh, about anything right now. You'd be surprised, though. When, I mean, when you're... Like, I noticed when you're hanging out with some of the players and they're watching these games, they're so quick to be like, oh, it's over. It's over, they lost. First Blood went so bad. Speaking of which, they will kill down top lane. They get the return, taking down the Wisp. It's the first start of that one, but it ends up being a one-for-one -one trade between supports. Ooh, two thought about making the jump there, but with the ward going down, Jug's going to be A-OK. -okay. So he comes right back in. Bristle drops that ward, and now he looks to go on forward, maybe waiting out the Blade Fury. Four more seconds, but not going to be able to get it. And now Wisp shows up. Get that sweet fountain regen. Goes for Bristle. Now Bristle going to dive because he's going to have plenty of sustain. Happy to still right clicking it through this Blade Fury. Gets the kill. The Quills. They don't care about no spins. They get that kill. And that's the power of this very selfless Wisp right now. Going with the more into overcharge. Now he does get the spirits here, but it's working so nicely with this Bristle combo. Yeah, Bristle can just do whatever he wants, and with all of the extra mana flowing in as well, the damage from Quill Spray is actually just crazy. You know, you think about Quill Spray, the damage is still super relevant in the mid game. Uh, but that's where he's got his int growth built up. But now he's getting all of that benefit here in the in the early game, courtesy of the Wisp. So not a whole lot that Speed Gaming can do to fight him. And they're even going to bring Melody Lovers up towards top now. So just going to be leaving Axe all by his lonesome down on bot. Axe is 11-0. He's fair on CS. Not where he'd like to be. And hasn't fully disengaged from the lane to maybe a, go for a jungle or anything. And checking on that jungle, there really isn't much stacks built up as of yet from these supports, so he doesn't really have that side reliable gold to kind of finish out a, a quick blink dagger build. So he'll make do with what he's got. And he's got the creeps out of the tower, but with all these spins, of course, your lane's going to continue to be kind of muscled forward pretty easily. So he'll make do with what he's got. On the other side, Tiny's got his power treads. We'll see if he goes more mobility with getting a, maybe some drums this game. It's called right here. Perfect timing for some of these creeps, but he only gets the one spin. There's another one. He'll be okay for now, but... Now Ventral Spirit has actually parted from the bottom lane, and they're looking for an engagement onto the mid. Maybe Luffy potentially could bait out this OD, but we'll see. Very patient. You should have known. He needs to be careful. OD has his sanities now. Immediate Astral as Ventral Spirit wants to come in, and she'll be on her way. Dazzle's even nearby. He doesn't have a TP, so he needs to be close if he wants to be there to help out. If they really want to get something done, they probably feel a little bit guilty about leaving Tiny solo against Axe on bot, so they're just going to keep running around and seeing if they can find something. Unfortunately, they're continuing to walk past Dire Wards this entire time, so looks like a little bit unlikely that they're going to find anything with the, the Wisp in the bench. Wisp does take a regen rune, which is a favorite of his. At least for now, he'll take himself back towards the top lane, but... That point of the ball is maybe thinking about a possible engagement here on the right-hand side where Jug's finding his own reliable farm with those stacks. He'll head back towards the top, but pings out bottom lane. We got a creep cutter here. Seven magic. Now going to get cross paths with VS here. Throws out the battle hunger, and it's an awkward trade, but here comes Luffy. Moving on forward, gets the slow magic missile, and chops him on in. Wow, the long ball toss coming in, though, from the free throw line is going to be your Tiny who secures that one. Awkward engagement, it takes a lot of muscle power, but they do manage to bring down the axe. Yeah, nice grab for them. Largely because speed just haven't been down bottom lane for a little while, and there's, there's no vision for axe to work with, so... He was still anticipating that the supports were, were trying to gank top or uh, gank mid, but they turn up in force and do manage to grab a seventh kill so far for EP. Things are actually looking great. Odie still just actually managed to lose all of his in stacks. Uh, on mid, so. Uh oh, here Might comes Wisp and Company. Troll moving on forward here, but here comes the rotation. It's going to be Axe. 
shows up and Sandy's Eclipse Wisp is going to be very low here. And with that, there's your dunk on the ball. Ironically enough, that's going to help get the kill there for Seven, Man Seven Magic. Rather, He walks away, but also at the same moment, Bristleback gets chopped on down from Juggernaut. His first Omni Slash is going to help that one out. So they end up getting a nice twofer there. Speed Gaming. Yeah, great turnaround for them. Some good experience for the support. OD just going to continue farming up on mid. And for the OD, it's a really important for Speed Gaming that they just keep him on track on farm. Doesn't really have much flash farming power as a hero. In general, if you're picking him, and back when you used to see him picked, it's largely because of his his lane dominance. So if you're not getting that and you're not getting your early farm, it can be very easy to fall behind and you know, not have any kind of impact during the during the mid game, especially when BKB start to come up. So good that they're keeping keeping him kind of ahead of the curve right now. We'll see what this OD can manage to break away from at some point and also to note Tiny is going right for the Agnum Scepter. He's already got his point booster. At least it could just be a reliable point booster for now, but Looks like he's got a free lane to work with, and he'll just muscle his way towards that big stick. And certainly with the assistance of all the overcharge and troll ultimate, he'll be able to swing that thing around. Plenty of extra force, so. We'll see now. More separation of farm from both teams as they continue to itemize a bit. It's a bit early here, but only a slight edge towards EP. But that's been kind of their play style so far. This is the third game now we've casted over here on this channel for the energy pacemakers, and they like to start off with a nice lead, but things tend to crumble in the later run. It could be nerves and misplays, but in their first matchup against Wings, against the Naga, they couldn't quite finish the job, and Naga was kind of able to take over. They, of course, did get that takedown of PR with the Wisp Tiny, but uh, we'll see here as they uh, recently also went down to Na'Vi. Now with Speed Gaming against them, they need this win to secure the spot into one of the top two positions. Yeah, back's, back's kind of up against the wall a little bit here for EP, but well, things looking all right so Dying far in the early game. Like you said, Tiny Gun's straight for the eggs. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. Like you said, there's all of the available buffs. A uh, little bit of an attempt on Bristleback up top, but with only two, it looks like they're not going to be able to get anything done. Lots of stacks. Can't underestimate how much damage those quills will do. He does have the <laughs> magic wand, but still. It'll be a okay. Plus, with a quick rotation over, a Wisp who could be always hiding about. It's already done a number on them once before. Don't want to allow that to happen again. Now, Ventral Spirit going to have the time to solo form bottom lane to get that swap. But mid lane, moving forward, OD is going to prison up Luffy. And that's going to stop them from kind of having any sort of full rush back. More farm continues here. Tiny's going to go, sh yeah, straight for the Agnum's not just a reliable point booster. He's already got the club. About 2k away, almost 1k away actually. And they're gonna be okay, but everyone kind of getting in on the jungle farm at least for now, or finding their own way. Here's a relocate I hear coming on in. It's gonna be on the Melody Lovers here. And he does get off the shallow grave very quickly. He'll be fine, walks away, they heal. Wow, barely alive at the back end of that last Tomahawk coming up from Luffy, and now EP have got to get the hell out of there. And they go right back from whence they came. Almost Radiance a pick on the Dazzle, but that early preemptive shallow grave saves him, and he'll be walking back home. Um, and perfect play with his magic stick and, and shadow wave as well, yep. dropping them right as he came out of the, the grave and giving himself the best opportunity to stay alive there. And you know what we just saw on mid may be the beginning of a, a recurring theme for EP this game. Is that initiation for them is a little bit tough. You know they don't have the easy tide or centaur or axe or you know something to lead off these fights. It really has to be swap or good relocate or you know something along those lines. So. We'll see how they manage to, to deal with that as we move forward. Because there is really good counter initiation on on speed gaming as well. They've got you know potential defensive imprisons, axe can jump in, grave. So finding kills may actually be really tough. Uh, this is a good point here. They want to smoke. Where is it? Who's got it? It's the, it's Melody Lovers, because they have access blink dagger. Give me that blink. We're gonna blaze it up. We're gonna head over to the other side. And we're gonna find a kill. And we're gonna find a dunk. That's the objective here for Speed Gaming. Will they find that opportunity? They want Troll, it looks like. They are going straight there. They can get it. Buffy, Blink, Call, Cast, Ward. God damn, that's a lot of ults coming out from the four of them. And Troll gets blown the hell up. Easy grab for them, and kind of the same way you see from your Bat Rider. Once he gets that Blink Dagger, you just want to meet that quota and get that kill right away. Oh, here comes Bristle, Astral. 
Gonna be popping out here. Now jump in call. Doesn't actually quite catch on the Bristleback, and he's on the way out from the south. And I think Speed Gaming don't want to further engage him, so they'll pull back to just kind of the one takedown on Luffy. Yeah, maybe a little bit of overcommitment using the Sanity as Eclipse there as well, but yeah, kills a kill, and again, they can kind of take fights on their fortified. own terms right now. You can't really force Radiant's too much. Top tower so. has fallen. So, take the tier one top. Jug already with ridiculous physical damage just Dyer's with the Mask of Madness. Chops that down, attack. and Speed Gaming just going to keep on going mid. Yep, they drop the weave, which uh, immediately kind of puts it out there that we're we're here to kind of stay and fight. I say that, and they immediately TP towards the bottom. <laughs> so we'll see if they can make a go potentially under the Wistoni or trying to finish off this tier one. They wait for Axe. There's the blink and call plus the TP coming on through. Relocate, save. See you later. No dunk for you, sir. Ha <laughs> ha. And Wisp, well, he's not going to be so lucky, but with Fan alive, he sure is happy. And, well. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Boom! Dead. <laughs> no chance for you, Wisp, but hey, that was a great relocate save for Tiny, because he, he was going to be done for. Yeah, Tiny picks up his tree as well, so he can start laying into the tier mid, and he'd be actually just dragging speed back and forth between mid and bot right now. They're doing a pretty good job. I'm a little bit surprised that speed didn't choose to just charge down and, and maybe take the trade with the bot tower, but... Probably the probably the right decision at the, at the end of the EP do push really really fast and uh, tier one's a little bit more valuable. So the tier one mid's a little bit more valuable than that tier one spot. With that, it's Roche time. The game move right on in like you do with your jug. You get down to a third life, but look who's a coming. EP barge on forward, get the stun. Can they burst down the dazzle? They can. He's done for. Roche is already so low. They gotta finish it off. They do get it. And Jug is able to pick up the Aegis, but they still want to fight. Here goes the tree, just cleaving home. He also gets the ultimate. Buffs on up, clears out another. Jug is not going to make it. The Aegis is going to be used, and now they will finish out their full five-man takedown. How you doing, huh? Done for. Triple kill for your tiny. And my god, EP will easily secure this tier one tower. Speed Gaming just absolutely crumble after taking out the Roche. Yeah, they, they got obliterated, dude. Like, a bunch Dyer's of them didn't even get spells off. That was... Dyer's structures are fortified. I, I don't know what to call that aside from a disaster. It really was. Now you can see, just watch this tower. Boom, bang, boom, overcharge. Oh god! So much siege. That's just a taste of what could be soon on the way here from EP. That is just tiny with just a flat out AGS only. Imagine an assault, uh, you know, assault Karas coming onto this team and they see an additional minus armor. Things are going to get ridiculous real quick. Troll does have his level 2 ultimate now, but this is the start of a very nice snowball that's built up here for EP and Speed Gaming. Hopefully, not regretting not doing that early ban on Wisp and allowing EP to kind of pick up this dynamic duo. Yeah, and Speed actually just gonna pick themselves up, brush themselves off, and go straight from it, it would seem. And you kind of get a taste there of just how this patch seems to work with a lot of teams' drafts. That, you know, there's, there's so much pushing power, people are taking heroes that can just bring down towers so quickly that you lose a fight and you just immediately lose. Has fallen. And lose a tier 2, lose a tier 1, and it's only going to get scarier, like exactly as you're saying. EP are just picking up more and more, uh, more and more damage across the board. Fan even just going to be going for, going for a Yasha here. So, mass siege on the way. Five man smoke. Oh, Wisp tether the hell out of there. He will. Long catch. So he gets to his comrade Fan, and that smoke is going to get popped, and they're not going to get anything. What almost felt like a brief Dyer's yellow smoke attempt to try to just attack. take the momentum back, they fall short. And with that top lane, you can hear the yell out from Dyer's Troll. There was a there was a tower there, Dyer's but it's gone now. It, is, it just gets absolutely annihilated. They do their split push now, and Speed Gaming just kind of scratching their heads as far as what they can get done in the meanwhile. They'll decide to maybe add some pressure here on the bottom. By that Radiant's point, they're going to get their top attack. lane tier Dyer's two is going to just eat so much damage fortified. with just these two. He's going to have his trolls Radiant's again in five seconds. This might have to be a trade, and they're trying to slow him down. Wisp, they got attack. out the Astral, and they will be able to take him and drop him, but that's going to be a Tier 2, or Tier 1, and a Wisp. 
And mind you, they got the tier one just before that, so I think still energy face maker is just getting the most out of all this. Yeah, and if you do, well, if you just showing that you can't really, you can't really try and trade with them here. I mean, they, they just traded a tier one and a wisp for a, a tier two, which I think EP are, are more than happy. You know, that's a trade that EP are more than happy to make. At this stage, they're getting even more farm in their bristle. He's almost got his BKB. You know, Tiny working towards a potential Manta style here, and yeah, Speed gotta gotta try and get some control over this radiant side of the map. They have to try and. You know, find these heroes that are kind of off pushing by themselves before they before they actually threaten anything. Otherwise, we're just gonna see this rinse repeat. EP push out top, farm the dire jungle. Somebody pushes out mid, uh, and they just continue to be elusive. Fan is here, but he is scouting out in Viz. You can feel the hunger coming up from Max. He got that first quota kill with the blink dagger, but ever since then it's been a pretty quiet game. And hey, Dazzle, that's Fan. Nice to meet you. He was in Viz, and he gets that quick pick on Dazzle, and will walk away with a hit and run. And even the oh, Juggernaut like pops his Mask of Madness and hopes to maybe catch up with that Tiny and get off the ultimate, but not going to be so lucky. So just another quick grab for him as he scouted out with that Invis rune. And Speed Gaming, they lose another. Yeah, and Tiny's just going to get colossal now. I don't, I don't know what Speed Gaming can really do to stop him. He's just gonna keep farming up with his ag. Wisp is kind of sticking with the bristleback at the moment, but they might we might see them team up a little bit further down the line. And well I, I talked about initiation being a problem for EP, but it seems like it doesn't really matter. They're not even too interested in in taking team fights right now. They're just gonna keep up the pressure on the lanes and make better use of the space. They're pushing out a little bit of a net worth lead and experience coming right along with it. They got to be feeling very confident. They got plenty of muscle power with two on his bristleback now with the mech and the BKB, mind you, with a full shiny 10 seconds to work with. And now with Troll, who has already completed out of St. Vinyasha, probably going to be going for the helm of the Dominator next. This adds up more and more sustained power. Yasha now on for fans, so his attack speed even going to be greater. Plus this Wisp, I think they just have plenty of ammunition to work with and... They got to feel like speed gaming can't really hold a candle to him at this point. And they they got to do plays like this, smoke up and just hope for pick opportunities. But the second EP sees that so many of speed gaming are missing from the map. They're just like, well, we'll just play it safe. We'll pull back, be passive, not show ourselves, and they won't be able to find those opportunities. Yeah, I think this is this is totally fair for speed to just keep running around and, and trying to find opportunities because in most fights this game, or at least at this, you know, for now, they should probably still have the advantage. They've got the potential Ace. axe initiation. They've got a bunch of really good ultimates to drop down. Uh, they didn't have their mech either on their OD at that fight at the Roshan pit. So I don't think that's necessarily indicative of how of the lay of the land in terms of team fights. But they're just struggling to find anything. EP with those tier twos down have just made so much space to keep mid and top pushed in constantly and. There's just way too much ground for uh, speed to cover to actually try and find anybody. So this is just really, really, really clean, tiny wisp and, and split push play in, in general from EP right now. And Luffy has been finding plenty of farm for himself, even working in the speed gaming jungle. He could be outright saving up for the heart portion of this potential satanic something. We'll have to see. Oh, call in, cancels out. The Berserker's call, but relocate on the return, and it's Seven Magic who's going to be taken apart right there. Immediate counter reaction coming out from Energy Pacemaker Squad, and they get their own kill. Speed Gaming are still frantic to maybe try to make something happen here. They isolate Vengeful Spirit and set up an Omni Slash right there for Chow, and he's able to get that kill. So they do manage to trade at least a one for one, but that's their axe going down for Eventual Spirit, who now leaves them with a little bit less damage. Yeah, and Tiny just reappears bottom lane. He's like, oh yeah, here's some more creeps. Here's another tower. Why not? I just saw all of you top. So. He, he, that, this is just troll ultimate. Now he's got overpower. Boom. Done. Free tower for me. Dyer's now that's even better for EP. Fallen. So they get their good grab. He already has his Manta, and he's got about 2,200 gold. He is very, very farmed. He's quickly becoming that raid boss. That becomes way too hard to slay. And there, oh, sweet double stack you got here, guys. Ours now. Oh, boy, Speed Gaming, they're going to have to keep reaching into the 
the pocket, but maybe pull out smokes or something to try to find anything they can. Speed's lineup is not very good on the, the back foot at all. You can kind of see you know, the way that they drafted it. They were hoping to get some momentum going with the Axe. They would have tons of push sustain with the Witch Doctor and the Dazzle, and they were just hoping to just keep barreling down lanes and you know, taking team fights, taking towers. But now that the EP cores have what they need, they just take complete control of the map. We've got a Vlad added to the mix from the Bristleback as well. So Radiant Tiny and Troll both going to be attack. loving that. And Speed still hunting and still fishing for some more of these smokes. But you know, now with the gem up, it's probably not going to last. You know, there's not going to be too many more opportunities. LT makes the right decision to not go down into the river there, but uh -oh. might still die anyway. I found him. And Bristle's also here, pops his BKB. They split the fight though, they can't quite decide who to go for. Eventual Spirit getting the attention of Witch Doctor. Here comes their big relocate play, and with that troll ultimate, he's hammering home. Boom, boom, going right for Witch Doctor. There's the kill, swap back's gonna be saving. The Wisp for the meantime, and just like that, three speed gaming members hit the deck. And EP again, converge and counter fight, and do a great job. Chow is forced to pull back and find his own side farm with the Ancient Stack. But that just kind of allows EP to go right into the Roche pit and immediately take the Aegis. Yeah, so immediately is definitely the first word Roche had dropped in a matter of seconds. And that was... Yeah, I don't even think that that was... You know, that, that there were too many misplays on, on Speed Gaming's part there. They were just... They're still just trying to force fights. They were running uphill into fog and just couldn't... You know, couldn't quite make their mind up. And even if they'd launched that fight better, I think they would have just immediately... You know, the relocate immediately comes in, they can't do anything about the tiny, and, and there you go, so... Energy pacemakers, I don't, I don't know. Man. Yeah, energy pacemakers, they this are, is, uh, are making it happen. This is a team that had the least information, at least with the wing squad. It's like, okay, they're former speed gaming, and they got Luffy and stuff, but... Who are these guys? They have a ridiculous name, pretty cool logo, but when you don't have a lot of information on them, you don't really know. And maybe Speed Gaming have done what Power Rangers did before. I mean, you gotta know whether or not they got a nice full little Wisp Tony kind of a lineup, and maybe you prioritize a Wisp band from here on out. But by that point, it's only best of ones. It's not like, oh, you learned your lesson from one game, now you can bounce back with the next two. You're that's it, you're done. And quickly, Power Rangers are zero and three. We're once the favorites, and we could see, you know. Energy Pacemaker tie things up with themselves, becoming 2-2, two and two, and in tiebreakers, they're just taking games and upsets off teams that should technically on paper have the easy win, but this is their best chance to thrive. This amateur Chinese team just won their spot through the uh, amateur. They're putting on a pretty this good is a, This is a really big deal because Speed doing pretty well so far, and it comes down to head-to-head, -to -head, right, if, b before uh, they do any other tiebreakers, so... You know, winning against the team that's currently in, in the number two spot oh, could yeah. turn out to be a pretty big deal moving forward if we end up with a massive tie. Uh, Piao lobs out the stun, quickly brings OD down to about a third life with one hit. And he gets his heal, he gets his force to get away. And now they know EP are here for business. We want that base. We're moving in. What are you going to do to stop us? So Speed Gaming need to kind of tap into their high ground defense. Dazzle waiting out, doesn't even have level 2 lead yet, but will need it. Actually throws it out onto the Tiny, tries to Manta, and now they're tier 3, gonna get pressure. And they just play a very slow siege here with the Tiny out in front. With that Aegis, he's very confident. They're doing the long lasso from Wisp. He's got his Blink Dagger, so there is gonna be a lot of free space here. This is what LD was talking about, and apparently what they did against Power Rangers previously, and what we see a lot from like MMY when he plays Wisp is, you tether in like that, you blink, and now you got this long ass tether. Look how much room he has to just kind of give him that overcharge. It's ridiculous. Now they take down that tier three, pop their BKBs, and they're going in for a slaughter. Omni Slash, desperation to come on out. They get the grave on to seven magic, and tries to pull out the call, and Sandy Eclipse comes on four, but Tiny keeps on bashing it home, godlike for him, as he clears out. Buyback has to come out from the axe, and they ignore those racks, and they are hunting right through the speed gaming base, trying to get more kills. But now it ends up being Tiny who's going to be chopped on down. They just going to be popped. Bristle might have gone way too far at this point. He goes down. Now EP are like, well, let's get back. Let's finish off these racks. And they do manage to grab down the one. Fan desperately wants the other. Gets it there, but will he make it out alive? The call coming in. Seven magic locking him in place. The spin and the save.
Wisp sends him to the bottom lane and will give him the safe passage on out to some more farm. Wisp might not be able to make it, but he could. He has the Blink Dagger. Let's see how his timing is. Shift Blink. Nope. Sorry, buddy. See you later. But still, big trades right there for EP as they're able to secure the racks. Maybe overdived a bit, but still got what they wanted. Yeah, I think Bristolback started getting hit by the Tier 4, so it was like, wait a second. Where am I? <laughs> and they kind of... I was like, okay, team, maybe we maybe we've gone a little bit too far, but they get the racks. Yeah, didn't suffer too many heavy casualties, and I don't know. The, the more I look at this game, the more I'm. I feel like the OD pick from Speed is a little bit weird. You, I mean, we both we both kind of went huh yeah. in the draft. You know, things were were pretty standard up until that point. Then they snagged the OD. Didn't really crush his lane at all. The troll still got decent farm. He went for this Midas, which is trying to drag things out, but then he went for the mech to try and team fight, and you know, I think even if he'd gone for a, you know, for a, a different item build or something like that, I still think the the impact that he's going to be having would have been a little bit a little bit weird. It's just, it's a hero that doesn't really fit the the, the current metagame, doesn't really yeah. push towers all that fast. I don't know what they were what they were planning around here. Yeah, it's hard to know unless you're a fly on the wall. Meanwhile, mid lane, yeah. Some pressure here just from the Manta Illusions forces some defensive rotations coming on out. So they'll thwart back that push. But there's already been damage in the base, so they're going to try their best to kind of spread out that pressure. But yeah, for OD, it was funny because they picked it up fourth, and they picked it up instantly as if it was like, OD, we just know we need this right now. Maybe they were anticipating the, yep. the Wisp and Tiny to be in the mid lane, and they have done an OD there before, and he's been able to hold his own, and they were antis anticipating the troll being there, but. I, I'm right there with you. This OD is, for how quickly they snagged it up, I don't feel like this is what they were expecting. He is able to throw together a sheep stick, which could help out quite a bit, but we'll find out if it's going to be too little too late at this point. Yeah, it's not like EP were, you know, Tiny doesn't love buying BKB, but he's a pretty capable BKB carrier. You know, they'd already got the troll. Uh, Troll really does not mind buying BKB at all. Another big smoke from speed. Can they actually find. Jump call is not there. They try to follow the force staff. Witch Doctor. Uh oh. I think I went too far, fellas. Oh, God. Oh, no. Grave, I got to get the hell out of there. He is swapped out. And he is not leaving. That is an instant two man support takedown. That Witch Doctor just did not have a chance. He was. Just like when you have a baseball bat and a baseball, you throw the baseball up in the air and just smack it on out. That's all it took. Ugh, ridiculous. So this is this is a team you banned Wisp against at the start. Very similar to like Empire. When they have the opportunity, this is what they do. And they crush. And you give them just an inch, they will take a mile with this Tiny. He's got so much going for him. The AC already on lock. So what is usually a weakness to Tiny having a low set of base armor? He's got plus 25 to work with. Insane attack speed putting on top of that, of course, the troll ultimate. Mind you that they raised the attack limit from 500 to 600 in the previous patch. It's just out of control how much damage they could do so quick. Yeah, a lot, lot of the time not relevant, but definitely in the case of, of troll and you've got overcharge working for you as well. We've got mm -hmm. people definitely, definitely benefiting from that. Fan's got his AC up. I think he's even, he's got something else on the, on the carry, yeah, you better, you better, you better believe it. That's that's almost a completed heart for him. Look so. at all these items. This is the richest curry I've ever seen in my goddamn life. He's got a heart now, and there's an also going to be yeah. Man, this, this is crazy. So as you can see, net worth, no surprise, 15k, and rising quickly here for EP, and what looks like potentially another upset for them. They actually put on a reasonable showing against Navi, mind you. Eventually crumbled before them, but this is a team that's had a a lot of tenacity here. Speed Gaming quickly learning a bit more about the team that no one really knows about as their 2-1 uh, record could quickly become a 2-2. Two two. But we won't count it out yet. Speed Gaming is an experienced group, and they do have the potential. It's just not – the opportunities haven't been there. Every time they try to make a jump in, it feels like there's just a relocate or just a quick counterplay, and they quickly just lose two or three. Yeah, if the game drags on, I think speed, you know, they still have things to grow into. Jug still has plenty of farm to be able to grab. OD can become a force really easily, you know, picking up a refresher or something like that, dropping the, dropping the double ult. But with a heart in hand, I don't think Piney is, you know, 
got too many worries. He's just gonna sit here with Wisp tethered 2,000 units away. There's a call, but he's gonna win this fight. Oh, relocate, actually, just for safety, to pull him back just a couple of inches. He'll be okay. Now he goes back in. And wow, okay, Witch Doctor's done for. No problem. Swap back, toss forward. It's all over the place. There's your Omni Slash going on through, but not really doing much to anyone. They pop their mech and they're happy to re engage. And it's going to be also the axe going down. They throw out the Astral. But OD's got to get away. Oh, the toss is there. The smack on the ass. OD's down. Melody Lovers, self shallow grave. Trying to walk himself back to base. Venture Spear not letting him, but there's a force to save him. And all the meanwhile, now they go onto the racks. Oh my god. Boom, bang. You take that racks, I'll take this one. We got it done, Bash Brothers. And your bottom racks is gone. Oh my god. EP on a tear. This looks to be the beginning of the end here for Speed Game. Oh crap. Yeah, there you go, GG. That's a, that's a towel throw in. Well, beautiful execution from EP yeah. with their tiny whisk. Well, I, I, I gotta. I, I think we have to you know, give so many props to the whisk play as well. There was that turnaround top where they picked up the two kills for the bristleback at the start. He was on point with relocating people out the entire time. You know, and, and if you look, he's, he's got five deaths, but I think almost three or four of those were just from defensive relocating people uh, who would have died otherwise. So. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, I just don't know if you can if you can be giving EP this wisp and speed gaming will also fall, so well done. And with that, they'll move into a nice two and two record. Both these teams will, so that is a lesson that hopefully other teams will have to learn. But it's not like they have the opportunity to really watch all the other matches that are happening simultaneously, so if you don't know, you gotta ban that wisp. So we'll see if that's gonna be the case. Our next matchup, which is gonna be our fourth of five matchups here. Oh no, wait. Did I get this wrong? Are we already on our fifth matchup? One, it's, two, three, four. It's number five coming up. I jumped in for number three, so. Wow, this actually went by pretty swiftly. It's only about five in the morning, but we got our one more matchup here for the <laughs> wild card. It's going to be speed gaming again, but this time they're taking on the Power Rangers, who have yet to get their win. Well, maybe they got a win between their last match, but we'll find out. All that information and more coming up next. Be sure to catch my good co-caster. Cameron, of course, uh, the base skip, slapping the base skip. That's how I'm going to try to remember it from now on, buddy. <laughs> catch him on his Twitter <laughs> for myself. Coddle Guy, catch me on over my Twitter. It's been a pleasure as always. We'll be back in just a moment.